Welcome back to Light Upon Light. We were talking in the first part about the letter which Prophet Suleiman gave the hoopoe to deliver to the Queen of Sheba. When the letter was delivered, the Queen opened the letter and she said to her council, O oh my council, I have received an honorable letter a letter worthy of respect. It is from Suleiman, signed Suleiman, and it starts with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Do not be arrogant against me and submit yourself to the true religion. Then she consulted with her chiefs. Please advise me. I do not decide anything without consultation with you. This shows you that this woman had great qualities because she was not like the Pharaoh who all the time only did what he thought was right without consultation with anyone else. The answer of her people was, we are endued with strength, we are so powerful, we have a lot of might, and you have the right to decide whatever you want to do. She said, unfortunately, when the kings enter any village, they destroy it and they humiliate the noblest people in it. So what I'm suggesting of doing is to send him a present. If he is a king, he will accept the present, then we will fight him. But if he is a real messenger, a prophet, then he will not accept the present. And this means we may have to join his religion. Very wise woman. So the ambassadors arrived to the palace of Suleiman and they brought so many gifts. Suleiman was so angry. He said, Do you bribe me with money and gifts? What Allah has given me is better than your gifts. You rejoice for your gifts. I do not. Go back. Tell them. I'm going to send an army which they will never be able to face. Then he looked around to his, the members of his council and he said, who can bring her throne here before they submit themselves to me in Islam? Now the members of the council were a man, a human being, and the genie, Afritun min al-jinn, a big genie. So the genie said, I can bring it here before this council meeting is over. But the man, the human being, who been given certain knowledge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, said to Sulaiman, I bring it here before you blink. So the throne was brought in front of Sulaiman at the speed of light and no change happened to it at all. Sulaiman was aware that when the ambassadors will go back, they will tell the queen what Sulaiman said about sending an army. He knew that she is going to come because she was a very wise woman. So she is going to start negotiations with Sulaiman, a dialogue. So Suleiman, when he saw the throne of the Queen of Sheba brought in front of him, what did he say? Did he boast? Did he show off? Was he arrogant? No. He said, my goodness, this is by the grace of my Lord to test me whether I am grateful or ungrateful. Truly, if you give thanks to God, it is for the benefit of your own soul. Allah doesn't benefit out of you saying, thank you Allah, alhamdulillah. Allah doesn't benefit out of this. It is for your soul. When you say alhamdulillah, when you give thanks to someone who did you a favor in order to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because the Prophet sallam said, whoever do not thank people, he does not thank Allah. So giving thanks to Allah does not make Allah more happy or doesn't make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
uh, uh, more important or does it increase his glory? No, it is for your own benefit. Woman kafara and whoever rejects faith, whoever denies the favors of Allah, فَإِنَّ رَبِّ غَنِيٌّ كَرِيمٌ My Lord is free of all needs, supreme in honor. So he disfigured the throne and when she came, he said to her, is this your throne? She said, I think it is my throne. It looks like it. Sulaiman built a hole out of glass, out of crystals. And then he said to her, enter the palace. So she thought that was water and lifted up her skirt. And then Sulaiman said, this is a floor made out of crystals, made out of glass. So at this moment in time, she realized she was wrong and she said, قالت رب إني ظلمت نفسي my lord I have been unfair to myself I have indeed wronged my soul وأسلمت مع سليمان لله رب العالمين I submit myself to Islam with Sulaiman and I submit myself to the Lord of the words and she became a Muslim because she realized that she was fooled by the appearance of the glass which looked like waves of water to her. I think there are many lessons in this story which we learn and especially about the hoopoe who recognized his creator and the fact that he was genuine in the excuse he gave Suleiman when he was absent. So please learn not to lie, not to tell any lies, and you should always tell the truth because the truth is the only way for you to be saved from any problems, inshallah. In the next couple of minutes, I would like to mention a very short story from Surah Al-Qasas, the narration chapter number 28. During the time of Musa السلام, there was a man called Qarun who was from the family of Musa. Uh, about 80 kilometers to the south of, Egypt, uh, south of Cairo, there is a lake, a salty lake known as Buhayrat Qarun, the lake of Qarun. The story goes back to the time of Musa السلام, Qarun was a very rich man. His treasures was so much to the extent the keys to the treasures could only be carried by a gang of very strong men. So you can imagine if the keys are so heavy, imagine what was inside his safes. He used to parade in the streets of Egypt, showing off his wealth and his uh, uh, glamour. So one day he was parading and the people said to him, fear Allah, do not forget your share in this life and always remember that what you have is because of the bounties and the favors of Allah. So he said, no, it has nothing to do with Allah. What I have is because of my cleverness, is because of my knowledge. I know how to work in the stock exchange. I know how to buy and sell shares. It has nothing to do with God. It is my cleverness. So while he was parading in the streets of Egypt, people queued to look at his wealth and they said, oh, we wish if we have the wealth of Karun. But those who have the knowledge of the hereafter said, don't say that. It is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This life is a temporary life. What you should seek is the hereafter. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened the earth and Qarun and all his wealth disappeared. So his house, his wealth, himself, they all disappeared. So the people who wished the day before that they would have loved to be as rich as Qarun, they said, oh, thank God. If we would have been like him, maybe the same thing would have happened to us. We should only concentrate on the hereafter. Thank God for what you have done and thank you for saving us from the fate of Qarun. So, and those who had envied his position the day before began to say on the morrow, ah, it's indeed Allah who enlarges the provision or restricts it to any of his servants he pleases. Had it not been that Allah was gracious to us, he could have caused the earth to swallow us up. Ah, uh, 
those who reject Allah will assuredly never prosper. Thank you for listening and I hope to see you inshallah in the next episode of Light Upon Light. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.